Hello and welcome to this edition of Orient at Your Library. I'm your host, Jesse Agnew. On today's episode, we'll speak with web coordinator Steve Saunders about drop-in computer help and signing up for online notifications. We'll also speak with the Head of Youth Services, Deb Refior, about the summer reading program. And finally, we'll chat with Adult Services Librarian, Alice Cruz, about downloading ebooks and audiobooks to your personal devices. All this, plus a look at upcoming events in every department. You're watching Orient at your library. Stay tuned. The Orient Library offers a wealth of resources on their website. Here's web coordinator Steve Saunders with more. I'm here with web coordinator Steve Saunders. Now, can you tell us a little bit more about the computer programs here at the library? Uh, this time around, rather than doing some basic introductory computer classes where we noticed that the, um, the assignments were dropping off a little bit, we decided that we're going to just offer some basic drop-in one-on-one. You bring in your devices, you ask us the questions you need to answer, and we will do what we can to help you out. Um, it's a two-hour block the second Tuesday of every month on uh, Saturdays between 10 and 12. Uh, we prefer them to bring their own devices uh, so that they can be comfortable with what they're working on so they don't have to translate from what we have here to what they have at home, which might be a little bit different. So what kind of devices do you guys offer instructions on? Are they iPads, tablets, laptops? Um, we will mainly focus on Windows devices. That, that's what we have the most knowledge on. But anything you bring in, we will do what we can to help you out. Um, laptops, um, tablets, smartphones, you know, whatever we can help you out with, we can help, we'll, we'll do what we can. So do you offer programs like Word, Excel, anything yeah, else? We still will be offering uh, separate Word and Excel classes. Um, mm -hmm. This is more just to replace the kind of the basic intro to computers, basic intro to internet type classes where we were finding people were coming to a two-hour class just to really get one question answered and it was really kind of a waste of their time. So th this way we can help with specifically what they want to know and work, not worry about all the extra, extra information. So how do people sign up and get involved with the program? Um, there is no registration. It's simply it's a drop-in, first-come, first-serve. Um, whenever you can make it within a two-hour block, we'll try and squeeze you in. Well, thank you so much. That's a lot of great information. Is there anything else you'd like to talk to us about? Uh, yes, I'd also like to show you how to subscribe and receive um, site content information in your inbox or your RSS feed. So one of the features that was introduced with our new website, um, which is about a year and a half old now, is the ability to subscribe to site updates. Um, and we've recently kind of built that up by adding some additional features. Uh, you'll find that under the subscribe and connect section on our website here in the sidebar and by clicking on the orange subscribe button. So on this page you'll see all the content that you're able to, sub to subscribe to from our website. We have options for email notifications or for uh, RSS notifications if you have a news or feed aggregator. Uh, what we offer would be, you can have the option to subscribe to all the different updates that are, uh, that are available on our website, or you can focus on specific areas of your interest. So if you're only interested in what's going on in the youth department, we have a section for that. If you're only interested in what kind of uh, new books and DVDs you, we have on offer, we have that as well. Um, we also have uh, event notifications, which uh, will push out any events going on within the next 14 days, also via email or RSS feed. Um, if you go with the email option, which is what most people are going to do, you'll be jumped to a subscribe page where you just give us your email address and fill in the catch me information. You'll receive a um, confirmation notification, which will actually verify that uh, it is a subscription you, you are interested in. And then you'll start getting updates as soon as we send them out. Thanks again for being on the show, Steve. It's been great to have you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Here are some additional upcoming computer classes offered by the library. Learn about settings, your timeline, and how to share photos. If you need to create your own Facebook account, please arrive a few minutes early. Come to this class with your Facebook questions. This class will be an opportunity for you to ask your questions about Facebook, expanding on the basics covered in Facebook 101. Register online at orionlibrary.org or by calling 248-693-3001.
Enjoy farm fresh produce, baked goods, art, and more at the 2014 Lake Orion Farmers Market sponsored by Crittenden Hospital. Walk, bike, or drive to the Orion Arts Center located at 115 South Anderson Street. Parents can purchase products grown and made locally while kids take part in fun activities like horseshoes and arts and crafts. Come early and come often as vendors change from week to week as new crops come into season. The Lake Orion Farmers Market is held every Wednesday from 2 to 7 p.m. through October 22nd. For more information or to sign up as a vendor, visit downtownlakeorion.org. The Orion Library offers a wealth of books and resources for all ages. Lori B. talked to us about how these materials are ordered. There is a huge amount of resources here at the library, and I'm here with Lori B. Sound to talk about how the materials get ordered. And Lori, thanks for joining us. Well, thank you for letting me. So, can you tell us about the materials here? Well, the materials, our collection is made up of a lot of different things. We have books, we have DVDs, we have audio books, we have music CDs, uh, puppets for the kids to check out, we have magazines, we have a whole lot of different things. The librarians do all the actual decision making on what materials are going to be in the library and they put their list together of what they want ordered, they send it to me, and then I place the actual orders. We work with a lot of different vendors. Some of them we do it electronically, and some of them we actually have to you know, send a, like an email type thing or um, actually a hard copy, things like that. But um, the, when they send the order to me, I put the order actually together with a PO and everything, and I send it out. At that point, we can create on-order records which means that patrons can then place holds on items. Now some items, real popular authors like Go, oh, John Sanford, um, Janet Ivanovich, uh, J.D. Robson, things like that, we have a system where they automatically send us the new releases of those authors so that we get them right away and we don't even have to keep track of what they're releasing. That's really the more, you know, the ones that do a lot of titles. Um, we place, once it's placed on order, then we can do the on order records. People can place holds on them and you can do that from home on through our website or the librarians in the library are happy to do it. Now the way they decide what they're going to order is based on the needs of the community. It's really a personalized service for the library that we don't just order whatever some national library suggests we order. The librarians will they're very open to what suggestions the community has as well. So if there's something that a patron is looking for and they don't see it on the shelves, it's always a good idea to talk to the librarians because if you're an Orion resident, they can interlibrary loan it if we don't have it and request it to be sent through Melcat from another library. Or if it's something that they think there might be a you know, a demand for, they'll go ahead and order it. But they like the feedback because it helps them to know what they should be ordering, what the community really wants to see here. Great. Thank you so much for being on the show, Lori. Well, thank you so much for inviting me to be on the show. It was my pleasure. Absolutely. Residents of the Orion area are encouraged to safely dispose of toxic chemicals by attending one of several no has events scheduled throughout the year. Orion Township will host an event on Saturday, September 20th from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. at Friendship Park and is free to residents. Drop off computers and electronics, paint, pesticides, cleaners and batteries. A team of trained volunteers and professionals will be on hand to collect, sort and package the items for proper disposal or recycling. For more information, visit nohas.com 
or call 248-858-5656. The summer reading program kicked off on Saturday, June 7th, but it's not too late to join. We talked to Deb Refior about how to get involved. I'm here with the Director of Youth Services, Deb Refior, and we're going to talk about the summer reading program that kicked off on Saturday, June 7th. So what can you tell me about the summer reading program? Well, the first thing I want to tell you is I want every child in Lake Orient to sign up for our summer reading program because it's so much fun. And we have two programs. We have one program geared for babies to age four, and I know the children are reading at that age, but we have lots of activities, so they want to learn how to read. And so if you sign up for that, we have lots of suggested um, play activities for the children to do, and as they go through the ducky maze, they can earn prizes. Our second reading program is for school-age children for ages, um, I mean for grades kindergarten to fifth grade. And what that is, is we have three levels of reading. And the children, they read all three levels and then they can enter our grand prize drawing, which will be the last day of summer reading on August 9th. So if someone wants to get involved with the program, what steps do they have to take? It's really easy. All you have to do is go to orionlibrary.org, and on our homepage, you'll see four reading icons, and you click the one that you are interested in and just sign up. Or you can come into the library, and any librarian will help you and your child sign up for the program. Great. Uh, That's really all there is to it. (laughs) It's really that simple. And like I said, you can sign up from now until August 1st. So if you can't do it this week, you can do it next week or any time until August 1st. And like I said, the end of the program is August 9th when we will have Gordon Russ, a performer, we will put on a show. And then after that show, we have the grand prize drawing for all the children who have read up to the three levels. Well, thanks again for being on the show. It's been a pleasure to have you. Well, it's nice seeing you again. Along with the summer reading program, the youth department is offering a wide range of fun activities for kids this summer. Here are a few additional events. This playful yoga class is designed for children ages 6 to 10 to make the time to relax and experience the many benefits of yoga. The delightful yoga session includes age-appropriate poses, yoga games, breathing exercises, and a visualization that will inspire and support kids. No experience necessary. Please bring a mat for each participant. Discover the wonders of science with a variety of experiences to test your knowledge of why and how things work. Create fun art projects with neon paint and see how neon colors glow under a black light. a habitat home. I love working on my habitat home. Soy dueño de una casa de habitat. My neighbor is a habitat homeowner. Being a habitat homeowner has changed our lives. My mortgage payment for habitat is less than what I paid for rent. Habitat for Humanity of Oakland County currently has homes available with mortgage payments lower than most rent payments. If you or someone you know needs decent and affordable housing, call 248-338-1843 or visit our website at habitatoakland.org. Media consumption is growing by leaps and bounds and the Orion Library is doing a great job of keeping up with today's technology. We talk with Alice Cruz about how to download ebooks and audiobooks. I'm here with Adult Services Librarian Alice Cruz to talk about the technologies available here at the Orion Library. Thank you for joining us, Alice. Thank you. Today I'd like to talk a little bit about the ebooks and e audio books that we offer here at the Orion Township Public Library. Patrons who have cards can download them from the internet uh, for free. Um, they're available for a variety of devices, including smartphones, tablet computers, and PCs. Um, It's as simple as going to your app store and downloading a free app called Overdrive Media Console. Um, And then you can start downloading books. 
Um, if patrons visit our library website at orionlibrary.org, they will see a link on the right hand side to ebooks and e audiobooks, and that will take them to a sort of online catalog for um, the audio, the e audiobooks and ebooks that they can download. Um, we have books available for children, for teens, for adults, um, in various genres, including fiction, nonfiction, mystery, picture books, you name it. Um, we do participate in a consortium with about 20 other libraries, so we share our ebooks with other libraries, but we also have a program called Advantage that allows us to get extra copies of books just for our patrons. Um, there are many books available to download immediately. Some have to be placed on hold, and patrons can have up to 10 um, ebooks checked out at a time. Um, the maximum checkout period is three weeks, and the good thing is there's never any overdue fees because once the book is due, it becomes um, unreadable. Well, that's so. really nice for us. <laughs> We're <laughs> checking out the book. So can you tell us a little bit about the magazines here, too? Sure. We also have a service called Zinio that allows patrons to get hundreds of magazines, including Consumer Reports and some of the other most popular magazines sent straight to their electronic devices for free. Um, now, like the ebook service Overdrive, it is fairly easy to set up, but we do have some patrons who don't feel quite as comfortable and they like to bring their devices right in and we're more than happy to sit down with them one-on-one -on -one and show them how to get the program set up on their device and how to start borrowing. So if someone does need help with these technologies, do they have to walk in? Can they call? Um, we certainly have tried to help people over the phone, although sometimes if you can't see what they're looking at, it's a little more difficult to help them. We do like to ask because it can be a time-consuming process that people make an appointment to come in for a one-on-one, -on -one, but we, if there's somebody available to help, we are more than happy to take walk-ins as well. Thank you so much for being on the show, Alice. It was great to have you. Great. Thanks, Jesse. Let's take a look at some upcoming adult programming offered at the Orion Township Public Library. The science of food preservation has changed greatly over the years. Learn to can and freeze fresh and local food safely. Robin Danto, MS of the Department of Food Safety and Nutrition at the Michigan State University Extension will present this timely and important topic. Registration required. Have you ever wanted to learn how to make your own laundry soap? How about a great all-purpose cleaner? Stop spending a fortune on commercially produced cleaning products that introduce toxic chemicals into your home and learn how to make your own with essential oils and natural ingredients. Hello, I'm Mike Bouchard, the Oakland County Sheriff. There's a big problem that faces all the communities in America today, and that's abuse of legitimate prescription drugs. Sometimes they're left in the home when a loved one passes away, or they're in the medicine cabinet for someone else, and a youngster in the home steals it and they abuse it. It's one of the fastest growing drug abuses that we see in our community and across the country. Secondly, we see these drugs oftentimes when they're no longer utilized being flushed down the drain and we're seeing higher levels of residual pharmaceuticals in our waterways and our streams. So to solve two problems with one effort, we partnered with Home Instead Senior Care to start a program called Operation Medicine Cabin to get those drugs out of the homes, out of the hands of youngsters and out of the waterway and safely and environmentally destroy them. Learn more about the program at OperationMedicineCabinetMI.com and be part of the solution. Thank you. The Orion Township Library is expanding its resources to include drop boxes around the township. Victoria Craw brings us more on the story. Take it, enjoy it, and pass it on to a friend. That's the motto of Orion Public Library's Little Library Box program. Gina Crowther is on a mission to share the joy of reading with the community. With the Take a Book, Leave a Book concept, the Outreach Services Coordinator at Orion Public Library created the Little Library Box program. All you do is um, come up to the box, open the door, and pick out a book to read. They're filled with a selection of books, all the way from board books for very young children, picture books, mid-grade books, and then a really good selection of adult books as well. Boxes are located at three Orion Township Parks, Civic Center, Friendship, and Children's Downtown. 
but Gina hopes to add more. The overall goal is to have at least seven or eight installed in the community and really bring the library out into Lake Orion. We're lucky to be very well supported by our community, um, but there's always people who we can share books with. Library boxes aren't unique to Orion Township though. It was the little free library movement that originally inspired the program. I had known about these for a while. They're all over the world. A lot of times people have them in their neighborhood, in their front yards, and that's a way that they can share books with their neighborhood. Gina decided to set one up right here in the township after seeing the success of similar programs in Novi and Traverse City. The first library box was built just before Thanksgiving in Children's Park. Since the announcement of the program, feedback has been positive. But there is one hallmark sign of success that Gina is quick to notice. But the best part is when I come to check on the little library box and I notice that books are missing and I notice that people have been adding books to the box. Reporting from the little library boxes, I'm Victoria Croft. Thanks, Victoria. In addition to the little libraries, the outreach department delivers library materials to Orion residents with no other access to the library for as long as the service is necessary. Contact the outreach services department at 248-693-3000, extension 309, for more information. On August 5th, the North Oakland Transportation Authority will be seeking a .25 millage. NOTA is a government authority that provides transportation services for senior, disabled, and low-income residents. NOTA services Oxford, Orion, and Edison Townships, as well as the villages of Oxford, Orion, and Leonard. At the end of this year, NOTA will lose $425,000 of its federal and state grants. The cut means a 47% cut to NOTA's budget and a reduction in the transportation routes from 13 to 7. The millage will allow NOTA to maintain existing operating service levels of 13 routes. It would also allow NOTA to replace aging vehicles at a rate of 3 vehicles per year. The .25 millage will cost an average homeowner $12.50 per year for a home valued at $100,000. For more information, contact supporters of the NOTA Millage Committee, and don't forget to get out and vote on August 5th. We end today's edition with our monthly conversation with Library Director Karen Knox. Hi, my name is Karen Knox and I'm the director here at the Orion Township Public Library and I'm excited to tell you about some of the new things that are going on here at the library. As I mentioned in our episode last month, uh, we kicked off our summer reading program here on Saturday, June 7th. And we had a great party outside behind the library and got a lot of people signed up for our summer reading program. But on the same day that we did that, our friends of the library started their silent basket auction, a silent auction of baskets, um, where we have a variety of baskets available for silent auction bids. Most of the baskets have a book in them and along with a lot of um, other items that go along with the book. A lot of the baskets are summer themed. So for example, there's a book on how to make smoothies along with a smoothie maker and all the other accessories that you might need to make some smoothies. Or there's a book with a bunch of beach reads and then a bunch of items that you might take with you when you go to visit the beach. All of these baskets are available in the periodical room at the library with bidding sheets in front of them. You just come in and place your bid for how much you are willing to pay for that basket. And if you are the highest winning bid on that item, you will be able to pick that basket up. The basket auction runs until June 28th, so please come on in and take a look at all of those baskets that are available. In addition, the Friends of the Library are running a bike raffle. They're raffling off a kid's bike. It is also available for you to see in the periodical room of the library. Raffle tickets are only $5, and it's a great kid's bike. You also get a helmet and a lock that goes along with it, so if you're interested in a kid's bike for someone special this season, come on in and buy a raffle ticket. Another great program that has started up this spring is the Michigan Activity Pass, or the MAP program. And this is a great program where library patrons can um, go online and get free or discounted tickets to a lot of arts and cultural organizations around the state of Michigan. 
So um, I want to show you for a little bit about how it works. Okay, so the Michigan Activity Pass program is run entirely online, and you can access it right from our library homepage. Don't forget that our library homepage is very easy to remember at orionlibrary.org. If you go to our homepage and you scroll down on the right-hand side, about halfway down, you'll come across a, a menu that's titled Special Programs, and the first link under it kind of looks like a little hot air balloon, and that is the link to the Michigan Activity Pass. If you forget all of that and just want to go to michiganactivitypass.info, it will take you to the same place. And this is the Michigan Activity Pass website. To get started on how to find um, a fun activity to do in Michigan, all you have to do is enter your location. So for example, I'm going to put in the zip code 48362. The second thing it asks for is how many miles you're willing to go from your start location. So it defaults to 50. I'll leave it at that. And then you have to put in your library name. And as soon as you type the word Orion, Orion Township Public Library pops up. You just have to select that by clicking on it and then click the search button. This is going into the database to find all the different arts and cultural organizations that have opportunities through the program. As you can see, it comes up with both a list here on the right hand side. And for those of you that are a little bit more visual, there's also a map of all the different locations over here on the left hand side. If you want to find out more information about one of these opportunities, for example, let's say you want to learn more about the Waterford Historic Village, if you click on the name of the organization, it will take you to that organization's website so you can learn more about what that historic village is all about. If you click on the More Info tab, it will give you the address of the, of the organization as well as a brief summary of what is offered at that organization. So you can learn that the Waterford Historic Village is a collection of buildings that takes you back to the early 20th century, etc. If you read down a little further, it tells you what the offer is through the MAP program. Through the MAP program with a pass, you can get free admission, as well as 20% discount on items in the gift shop. If you scroll back up a little bit, you'll see there's directions how to get to the Waterford Historic Village. And then finally, the most important link of all, Get Passes. If you click on the Get Passes link, <clears throat> it takes you to the place where you can see whether or not there are passes available. And in this case, there are no passes available because the Waterford Historic Village is closed for the next three days. What you can do is increase your search to the next 14 days. Let's see if there's any passes available looking further out. And if not, there is. So it looks like this particular location might only be open on Wednesdays, as you can see from the list. You can request a pass by clicking on the Request Pass link, and it takes you right to the spot where you can reserve one pass. It gives you the date and time that you reserved it. You just put in your information, click Continue, and you'll be able to get the pass directly off the website. So as you can see, it's very easy to use, and if you have any questions at all, feel free to contact the library at orionlibrary.org. So as you can see, using the Michigan Activity Pass program is very easy. Just go online at any time. The last item I want to mention is that the staff is starting to work on a project that will allow us to install our self-checkout at the end of the year. First, we have to change all of the materials in our collection over to a different kind of security system. So the staff will be taking time over the next few months to change the items over to that new security system. And then we hope to have the new self-checkouts out in the lobby and available for patrons to use by the end of the year. Thanks for joining us for this edition of Orient at Your Library. You can contact the library at 693-3000 or on their website, orionlibrary.org. On behalf of the entire library crew and the ONTV crew, thank you for watching.